Hello, my name is Marty Schultz. I'm the Vice President for Research, and I'm pleased to provide this campus update regarding research. Though I am presenting the material for the update today, I want to acknowledge that I prepared these materials with Haley Sin, Director of Environmental Health and Safety Office, and Debbie Zumba, the Associate Vice President and Director of Purchasing and Business Services. Both Haley and Debbie have been vital contributors to the critical incident management team as we respond to the COVID crisis. Before I begin the formal presentation, I want to convey my gratitude and admiration for your resilience and determination in confronting the obstacles of our time. I will share more later in the presentation about our researchers' productivity despite the challenging environment of our current moment. I also want to convey my empathy and concern for all of you working in the face of new barriers and complications, whether it's caring for young children or coping with isolation, stress, and fear. I'm especially cognizant of our colleagues at the beginning of their careers who are anxious about disruptions to their career trajectories. Please know that we are committed to your success and want to support you during this challenging time. Now I'd like to turn to the slides. Note that while I'll often use the term research throughout the presentation, I mean the term inclusively to represent research, scholarship, and creative activities. The strength of a comprehensive research university is its breadth of disciplines across the arts, humanities, and sciences. You'll recall that it was March 18th when we announced the ramp down of on-campus research activities. On May 18th, we then announced the ramp up of on-campus research as a pilot to test health and safety protocols for a broader return to campus activities. We are moving toward the conclusion of this pilot period on August 1st. The university's critical incident management team developed and disseminated policies and procedures for returning to campus with the goals of limiting exposure to and slowing the spread of COVID-19. The detailed plan for fall 2020 is on the coronavirusuiowa.edu webpage. We owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to the Associate Deans for Research for overseeing both the ramp down and ramping up transitions for their colleges. One of the critical lessons we learned during these last few months is that the strong leadership in each college is essential. This slide features the current slate of associate deans for research, plus John Keller, our Dean of the Graduate College. Your collegiate associate dean for research remains an important source of questions about maintaining your research, scholarship, and creative work. I also want to thank Pat Winokur for help and three previous associate deans who significantly contributed to smoothing the ramp up and ramp down processes, Mark Armstrong, Nick Bowman, and Galen Schneider. Lynn Finn and her team at facilities management and the facilities management managers in the departments and colleges are, were also essential in ramping up research in a safe and organized fashion. I want to remind you that our research administration and compliance units have not missed a beat during this crisis and remain available to serve you and your research needs from processing grants and contracts to protecting your intellectual property. We also encourage you to contact our research development office for assistance with proposal development. RDO Director Aaron Klein has been convening groups to discuss interdisciplinary approaches to the COVID crisis if you have an interest in addressing this grand challenge. As I mentioned previously, Haley Sin and the Department of Environmental Health and Safety have been integral to the campus response to COVID. This slide provides guidance for health and safety as we return to campus. We need want to create a schedule that allows for social distancing. Oh, we always wear face coverings unless alone in a private office. Minimize shared items and desk space. Disinfect shared equipment before and after each use. 
and do not begin an experiment or come to campus without an adequate stock of personal protective equipment. Environmental health and safety has also provided guidelines for cleaning and disinfecting um, spaces on campus. Um, I should mention again, that while some of these guidelines speak to laboratory environment, studio performance and other workspaces on campus will follow these same guidelines to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Debbie Zumba, the Director of Purchasing and Business Services, provided this slide to remind us that you should order your employee return to work kits through University Shared Service Contact. If you need additional PE or supplies, contact your shared services representative. It's not surprising that the research enterprise would teach us valuable lessons regarding how to safely return to campus. After all, that's what research does. It eliminate, illuminates new pathways. A few of the salient features that we've learned over the last few months are the ability of our faculty, staff, and students uh, to identify incredibly creative and innovative ways to conduct our work safely and in many cases virtually. Ramping up research takes significantly more time than ramping it down and everyone has a personal responsibility for the common good and compliance with safety standards for PE and disinfecting is essential. As I mentioned earlier, I applaud our faculty staff and students resilience in coping with COVID. Next slide. As you may have read in last week's news, funding and support of core UI research activities in FY20 rose an incredible 15% to $535.5 million in FY20. Here are just a few examples of some of the COVID related research led by our UI faculty and researchers. Pat Winokur received funding to study the effectiveness of messenger RNA vaccines in potentially uh, preventing COVID. Uday, Uday Kumar received a NSF rapid response research grant to develop a model for studying how droplets of droplets dry on different kinds of surfaces and the implications for COVID-19 survival. Mark Berg received an NSF rapid response research grant for his project, Resiliency and Vulnerability to COVID-19 in Rural Communities, Health and Socioeconomic Wellbeing in the Context of Ethnic Diversity. And Patrick O'Shaughnessy is testing respiratory performance after various methods of disinfectant. In the midst of this global pandemic, we are fortunate to have an outstanding College of Public Health here at the University of Iowa. Dean Edith Parker and her colleagues have provided not only leadership for the CIMT and health and safety committees, but, the, but they have been working with partners nationally, statewide, and locally to model the progression of COVID and evaluate safety measures. The State Hygienic Lab, which is also part of the University of Iowa, has been another champion of public health in the state and is quite literally on the front lines of the pandemic. Operating 24 seven, they have conducted over 180,000 COVID tests to date. As I mentioned earlier, we are especially cognizant of the challenges confronting our early stage colleagues. Here, Dean John Keller and the Graduate College provide information about resources for graduate students and postdocs. Note that these links will be posted along with this video on the university's COVID site. Undergraduates are critical, not just to our instructional mission, but also to our overall research mission. We remind you that undergraduate students um, must be counted as full team members when determining safe staffing levels and social distancing in the labs and studios. Now more than ever, mentorship of our undergraduates is critical and crucial. The Iowa Center for Undergraduate, well, the Iowa Center for Research by Undergraduates is an excellent source for students and mentors. 
So in summary, I wanna just say that on-campus research, scholarship and creative activities is open um, with all of our new safety procedures on social distancing, personal hygiene, protective equipment and enhanced cleaning in place. All members of the campus community are allowed to participate in research scholarship and creative activity. And your department head and associate dean can really help you navigate all the new processes and procedures that we have in place. And as always, the Office of the Vice President for Research is ready to assist in any way that we can. So thank you for tuning in today. Um, and here you'll find our office email address. We welcome your questions and are eager to help you with your research, scholarship and creative activity needs. Please do not hesitate to contact me or any of my colleagues in the office of the Vice President for Research. And thank you. <laughs>